Right, so let's do a quick recap over here. And you can see that I've saved a root or a collection in Postman, which is our index root. And this is just going to return a list of all of the people within our database, right? And this is a paginated list. So uh, if we take a look at links, we've also got uh, some pagination returned down here, as well as any meta information for the page. Uh, now let's take a look at the next route that I've also set up, which was our show route. And um, that just returned one specific person from the database. If I wanted person three, I'd pass person three's ID in here and we'd have that person. So uh, now that we know how to do show and index routes, let's take a look at storing a new person in our database with a post route. So let's go back over to our Laravel project and in the person controller, I'm gonna create a new function over here. So let's go public function, and I'm gonna call this store. And uh, let's just go ahead and drop in our curly braces. And the reason why I'm gonna call this store is because you know if we go over to uh, our route list and we take a look at the second route here, we've got um, store set up. So I keep jumping between route and route, just deal with it, because <laughs> I'm probably gonna do it a lot. But um, yeah, we've got a person controller set up over here with a store function. And that is the function that we're gonna set up to create that new person. Okay, so what I want this to do is I want this to do the exact same thing as show. When it's done, it needs to return the person in that uh, collection. Uh, so it's first of all going to create that person and then we'll return the person over here. So return a new person resource with the person that we've just created. Uh, so let's take a look at creating that person. And the first thing that we're gonna need to do is perform some sort of validation on our side. So let's do a request validate and um, we'll have to validate all of the fields because I've allowed none of them to be blank. So we just need to make sure that the user is actually passing through a first name and that can, or that's gonna have to be uh, required. And so is our last name, city, uh, phone number and uh, email. So we can just change this to be last name, phone, email, and what was the last one? City. Of course, I can just tab indent this so they're all in line and it looks a little bit more tidy. Um, but you can see right now I'm gonna get an error because we have an undefined variable here, request. So uh, if I scroll up, we should have uh, the illuminate request uh, facade over here. And we just wanna make sure that we're actually accepting uh, a request variable with a type of request, right? So if I save this now and we pop back over to our um, postman, let's create a new route over here. So I'm just gonna add in a new tab and let's just copy that uh, URL, except it's going to have to be person. And uh, we want to make sure that we're sending headers of accept uh, Jason and content type must be Jason as well. And if these are not set, you're gonna get um, some weird HTML as a response. Uh, and now let's, um, let's actually set this to be a post request. And we're also gonna have to set, him, set up some parameters, but right now let's just leave this at blank in the body and let's hit send. And you can see that we've got the data given was invalid. So first name is a required field, last name is a required field. That means that our validator over here has kicked in and we can actually see that we've not passed any of these values with our request. So let's actually send in um, some form data over here. And this is just gonna simulate a form on our page. So let's create a field for first name and that can be my first name, Quinton and last name can be my last name, which is what. Um, then we can also do email, which can be uh, do not reply at example.com. Uh, we can also do a 
uh, phone number over here. Well, we're gonna have to do the phone number because it's required, and that's just gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, okay, well, validation is not entirely necessary as long as it's something has been passed in. And then let's also go, um, so we've got, what is the last field? City, and that needs to be Cape Town or whatever you want, okay, wherever you live. So let's hit send now. And uh, great, so it looks like we've passed our validator, but we're getting undefined variable person. And that is uh, this line over here. So we haven't actually created our person to send back to the uh, API. So let's go back here. And uh, after we've done the validation, we want to create a new person variable. And we're gonna set this equal to person create, well, yeah, is it gonna be create just like that? Yes, okay. And this is going to create a new person from our person model. Uh, and we can just go ahead and say request all. So once this is passed validation, we know that all of our data is valid. And um, yeah, we can just pass all of those fields in here. And that should create a new person. Um, but we are probably gonna get some mass assignment errors if we don't go over to our person model over here and just add in this code. So we just need to make sure that all of those fields are fillable. I'm just trying to copy something off screen. So let's go copy, paste, and yeah, there we go. Uh, so now all of these fields should be fillable. And if we go back over to Postman and we try do a post request again, let's hit send. And let's scroll down here and you can see what has happened is we've um, returned the data of a new person. So in the back end, what happened was that person was actually created. If I come back to my database, just refresh, scroll down. We've got that uh, person as a new person in our database. And uh, yeah, Postman has actually returned that. So we can use this to verify that on the front end that this person was actually created. Um, and we can obviously see that from the response status of 201 as well. Okay, so now that uh, this route is working, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this as a uh, store route. And that's gonna be saved in people finder. So let's just save that. And that is our store route set up. So the next route we can take a look at is the update route. And that's going to be, um, if we maybe just close Let's close the index tab. Let's close our post tab. Um, and uh, let's create a new tab over here and let's just copy from the show route. So that's gonna be, if we wanted to update person three, uh, we'd simply need to add in the information that we wanna update in the body. So that's also gonna be form data again. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at actually setting all of this up. In fact, we can put our headers in here at least for now. So accept. Um, JSON and content type must be JSON. Okay, so let's actually save this as update. All right, so now that route is set up, uh, we need to make sure that it's actually a put request because this is gonna be an update route. And now let's take a look at actually setting that up. So let's go back over to our controller. Um, and I guess we can dark block this and create a new method over here. So uh, public function, um, and what is this one gonna have to be? It is gonna have to be update. So public function update. And let's go ahead and make sure that when we update this, we're also going to return the person from the API as well, just so you can verify that that person's update details have been updated. So we're gonna return the person resource here. And of course we know that at the bottom of our function, this is gonna return the new person resource of the person that was actually passed in. Uh, and the great thing about this is because this is an update route, we're actually gonna be accepting the person up here. So that can be accepted as the person variable. And from here, all we need to do is uh, update our person before we pass that back. So to do that, I'm just going to say person, well, person 
update and um, we can pass this an array of all the fields that we want to update. In this case, we can probably just do request all. And of course, uh, we could also put in a validator here just to make sure that all of our um, validation is correct. But I'm going to assume that the user is just passing in something as a string. Uh, and of course, because we're using request, we need to also accept that as an argument up here. So this is also going to have to accept a request, um, a request variable of type request. Great. So let's save this now and let's go back over to our um, postman. And let's make sure that we are going to send some information in the body so we can send in a first name uh, of Jared and a last name of uh, Watt. And that will just update that person's uh, new name to be Jared Watt. So if we take a look at our database right now, person three is Ruby Bartoletti, and we're actually gonna change that. So let's go ahead and change the email as well to be uh, Jared at example.com. Great, so let's hit send. And uh, looks like we've got the same person's information sent back. So I don't think this has actually updated. So let's come back here, refresh. Yeah, nothing's updated. Okay, so why don't we do this, right? Uh, let's go back over to our controller and let's actually die and dump that. So I'm gonna command uh, duplicate that line and let's just get rid of all of this and die and dump request all. So let's actually see if there's any information that's coming back from there. Let's save um, and then let's send the request. And okay, that didn't come back as JSON. Let's preview, uh, but it looks like we have an empty array. So uh, basically what's happening there was we were updating, um, we were updating our entry, but with blank data. So let's try and see if we can get this data to actually come back uh, as something. So instead what I'm gonna do is pass through raw data. And I think that's because form data needs to be posted uh, and we're using a put request. So let's go back to raw and let's send through some raw data here, but I'm gonna make sure that this is uh, JSON data and not raw text, because by default, this is gonna be a raw option. So let's go to uh, JSON and let's uh, open up some curly braces over here and then we'll pass through a first underscore name and that must be uh, equal to whatever first name we want to pass through. So let's say we're going to pass through Jared. Um, oops. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be comma separated, I think. Um, seems like that's fine. But the moment we comma separate it, there's an error. Although I think that's just because, uh, yeah, we just need some more uh, text in here. So yeah, basically the last object with, within our JSON object cannot be um, cannot have a comma after it. Okay, so let's uh, pass through a last name as well. And let's have that set to what? And let's pass through the email as well. And uh, this one won't have a comma after it so that we meet our JSON standards. Um, and this is going to be, uh, what was it? Jared at example.com, right? So let's hit send now. And this should have returned some data down here. Great, so we've got um, some data in our preview so we can get rid of the die and dump and uh, come back here, save. And let's go back over to the pretty version of this uh, and send the request again. And now, yeah, if we send this request, the user should have updated. So now we've got Jared Watt returned. Um, and the, the email has changed as well. And if we take a look at this in our database, I know that this information is all rather small, um, but I, yeah, I can't zoom in. Anyway, um, value three in the database should now be Jared Watt instead of Ruby. Great, so that's updating stuff in the database now. So just make sure that you're passing that through as a raw JSON data. Uh, and in the next video, we'll take a look at, at deleting somebody from the database. So that's all I have for you and I'll see you guys next time. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, I'm gonna assume that whatever I was teaching you now was helpful. So I just wanna say, uh, if you did make it to the, this point of the video, subscribe 
and check me out on social media, especially Instagram. So all of my social media is on screen now and I'll see you guys next time.